everybody on behalf of cycle waves and penguin random house india i'd like to welcome you all to the book launch of the kiss of flies by imran hashmi and bilal siddiqui this is a very very proud moment for us the book has already done very well it's a best selling book and we're finally able to launch it here in mumbai so thank you all of you for being here please welcome all our panelists with a huge round of applause This event is also super super special because we have the real hero of the book Ayan here to launch the book with us today. So a warm warm welcome to you Ayan. And let me quickly now introduce you to the panelists although most of you are friends, family and fans and you know all the people here already. We have Hussain Zaidi here India's number one crime writer. Right of many books from Black Friday to Dongri to Dubai, and also uh, a person whom we publish Blue Salt books with. It's a real pleasure and honor to work with you, Sen. I'm so glad that you're here with us Thank you. today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Imran Hashmi, of course, actor of blockbuster Bollywood films, but now also a best-selling author. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Hey. So here he's the person why the book happened. He is the real hero. Uh, most of you who would have read the book would know uh, the journey he has gone through and the courage and uh, you know determination he has shown through everything. Uh, so I think uh, just hats off to you. Keep on or off, you are the real superhero. I would now request our guest of honor, Ayan, to formally launch the book here in Mumbai. <laughs> दूसरी बार भी वो लोग खड़े हुए साथ में मोबाइल वाले भी ले लो अभी लेने देने मोबाइल वाले तुम्हारा इतना ना तुम्हारा इतना
अरे अंकित बस ना खाली पैसा ही होता दोबारा नहीं I will now ask these guys to speak and tell you about their journey and what they went through and how they thought about writing the book. Well, first of all, thank you everyone for coming here this evening. Thank you so much. Um, I want to start by thanking a few people. Without them, this book wouldn't have been possible. Uh, first of all, Mr. Hussain uh, the man who relentlessly pushed me uh, week after week, month after month, after I came back from Canada where he was being treated. And I remember what Hussain told me, he said that, you know, you've been through this as parents, um, this information that you've had, that you've got on your side, if one family, if one parent, would, if one child fighting cancer can have this information on his or her side, it would be battle won for all of them and for you. And also Bilal, um, you know, my partner in crime, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Uh, he really pushed me, uh, dig down into those painful memories, um, back in 2014 in January and, and document them in this book. Uh, so thank you, Bilal. Okay. And also, Mili, uh, the entire team at Penguin, um, it wouldn't have been possible without them. They've really given the book the kind of exposure uh, that it needed to get across uh, to all, uh, to everyone uh, in the hour of need. And also, I think next month there will be a Hindi version and a Marathi version uh, that will be launched. So looking forward to that. So let me just take you back through the incident. Um, two years back and tell you exactly how the book eventually happened. It was uh, January the 13th, uh, 2014 when uh, as a family our life was completely uh, wrecked. Um, it was a, a casual brunch that me, my wife and my son had gone for uh, to Taj Land's Head. And it was there where we detected some uh, abnormal symptoms in our son. And uh, we rushed him to the hospital. There was his head pediatrician there, and uh, tests began. Uh, you know, there was a conversation that we had two weeks back. We didn't want, uh, we were delaying a simple blood test for the hemoglobin, um, because we didn't want our child to go through physical trauma when a needle went into his arm. And here in this hospital, there was needle after needle jabbed into his arm, uh, and doctors trying to get to the bottom of the problem. Anyways, the nightmarish of the day ended. We went back home. And I went onto the internet uh, to do my own research and I typed out his symptoms and what I was confronted with uh, on one website, uh, that my part, it said uh, the dreaded C word and below that there were a list of other diseases and I remember going to sleep that night, before that I prayed to God and I said that please don't let this be cancer, please don't let this be cancer. But next day uh, our worst fears manifested. Uh, his chest x-ray and his uh, blood test were normal. But in his sonography, there was uh, a tumor the size of a season ball that was growing on top of his left kidney. And um, I remember seeing it on the sonography machine, this dark gray haze. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's Wilms tumor. It's a very rare case of kidney cancer that happens to a minuscule percentage of kids. Uh, of all, of all pediatric cancers, roughly around 2-3% to and he happened to be uh, part of that unfortunate percentage of kids. If you've had someone close to you being diagnosed with this disease, you know what the next couple of weeks, months and possibly years are like. You're hearing things like staging, pathology, chemotherapy, remission, um, radiation. And it was very frightening for us back then because we didn't know staging of cancer. Uh, and even these cancers are divided into two uh, subgroups which is uh, favorable and unfavorable. Uh, God forbid a child has unfavorable, the chemotherapy does not work. Uh, but 
God is, I guess, very kind. In the next week after the surgery, we realized it was a favorable cancer. And we as parents, family, we fought. We fought hard for seven months. We took him to Toronto for his uh, treatment, uh, chemotherapy. And through this entire phase, this is how the book actually started. Somewhere it started uh, seeding in my mind that there was this fear in me. And there's a fear that in most of cancer patients and parents, um, the fear that when the chemotherapy is being administered, uh, you feel the job is being done and something is fighting the disease. But what happens once that stops? Uh, doctors and oncologists didn't give me the right answer. The different answer I wanted to hear. Uh, they told me that, you know, take the chemotherapy, fingers crossed it won't come back. Because there is recurrence in cancer, there is a five-year survival rate. Uh, so I started doing more research. Turned out, uh, some great information which was going to help us out was that uh, roughly 90% of cancers were lifestyle related and uh, a small percentage of cancers were genetic, which means that we could have fought this, we can fight it. And there are a lot of things that come into play. There is uh, obviously lifestyle is what when you come to cancers, when you come to uh, terms with why cancer happens. The air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, the stress levels, all of this contribute to an abnormality in the body. And we put Ayan on a very, very good diet. He's probably the only six-year-old who has a vegetable smoothie. I can't have it. So he, he really, uh, I guess, worked his way himself uh, to cure himself of this disease. And, um, you know, it just, it's, Statistically, they say that roughly by 2030, there will be four to five people who will have cancer. And that's a very alarming rate for our country. Uh, that means probably everyone in this room, at some point of time, with our given diets and lifestyle, our candidates to get this disease. So I felt once Hussain came to me and Bilal came to me and they said that, you know, you have to give this information now to people. And if it touches one life and gets the information to them, it will be uh, a great accomplishment. And this is not just for cancer patients. This is for people for prevention. Because even we as a family felt that this could never happen to us. Cancer is something that happens to someone else. But I have news for you. It comes knocking on your door without a warning. And sometimes it gets very late. So I would, I would advise everyone to go out and read this book. We have uh, put the last three chapters, which uh, are about what you can eat and what you can avoid uh, to reduce your probability of getting this disease. Something that oncologists will not tell you. Uh, I have nothing against them. They have saved my son's life because his chemotherapy was given to him. But uh, the fact is that food does not come into their domain. It cannot be paid into. So th that's why pharma companies will never say, if you have curcumin, for example, it can help you fight heart disease and cancer. So all these things have been documented in this book. So I hope everyone gets to read it. And um, yeah. All those uh, small uh, episodes that you went through while you were writing this book or when you were going through in US and in India. Um, you know, first things first, when we, we decided that this is going to be documented in this book, um, I thought it's going to be an extremely painful journey to relive all of that once again. Uh, in some ways, moments brought about, uh, you know, feelings of nostalgia because like Bilal said, the film is, the, the, mo the book is not just about the episode of cancer, it's about retracing my family and how I was in college, school, my grandmother, my father, everyone in the family. Um, but apart from that, I think it was very therapeutic. Uh, it's like, it's like counseling, you know, there are feelings that are there, you've been through them, they're painful. But the moment you talk about them or you pen them down, it uh, just finds some kind of closure. So I think this book really, you know, when I went through reading it uh, at one stretch, once it was done, it again uh, was extremely therapeutic to know that the worst is behind us. And uh, fascinating because we as a family unit could actually get through this and we could fight this disease. And it get, takes me back to the first day, the hope with which we started off. Um, where Parveen and me held back our tears um, because we couldn't in front of him. Uh, we had to show and we be this uh, come from a place of strength and uh, told ourselves that we, we're going to get through this and we're going to make sure nothing happens to our son. 
So it's just a feeling of accomplishment. Everyone felt that in my family, friends, everyone when they read the book. What about those uh, stories of your, you know, when you were uh, climbing the uh, ladder of success, becoming a star? For example, those stories about you, you know, kissing a heroine and coming home and seeing a sulking wife. So what about those stories? Do you feel bad about it? Or does Parvin still fight with you about she those? Still, she still sulks. She doesn't hit me as hard. Okay. <laughs> yeah, earlier it used to be with a bat. Okay. Now it's just with the hand. So <laughs> she's kind of tamed down over the years. But you still bribe her with that jewelry? Piece of jewelry you have to give every time you kiss her? Bags, away? bags. Bags. I always buy her bags. Okay. For, for, for every kiss, for every film. So, so she's got a cupboard full of bags. There's one cupboard dedicated to bags. <laughs> yes. So after Azhar, after kissing Narikis Fakhri so many times? No, no, as many times. Okay. Bag is only once. Only once? Yeah, yeah. We had a barter deal. That way, I would, I would, you know, I told her, I will kangal ho jaunga mein. Okay. <laughs> Har cheez ka paisa mat dena. Film ka paisa le do. Okay. Aur bag kharit lo uska. So, uh, are there more such stories which you have not disclosed in this book and just kept to yourself which you will reveal some other time? Hussain, this takes me back to a discussion we had in my van <laughs> a month back where I thought you were joking, but you were actually serious. You said that uh, Hussain actually came up and said, uh, Iman, this book is doing so well. I'm, I'm greedy. I want to tell you to write another book. I was like, I, I have no experience to share right now. I just shared this, uh, the, the biggest experience in my life. And now Hussain will tell you first the title of the book that he wanted me to write now. Please tell them the title of the book. <laughs> Let's keep it together, man. We'll do it when we do it. It's about, just at least tell them what it's about. Okay, you tell. You go ahead and do this. I tell them the title, no? <laughs> title, tell them. It's about being a love guru. He does not know what a hopeless romantic I am. I might act as a smooth guy on screen. But if you ask my wife, what a hope Yeah, he proposed his wife in a lift saying, can we, I mean, marry? Yeah, yeah. Something of that. By side. the way. And yeah, I by the way. I got rejected like three times. So that, that's the love guru for you. I think I'd make a disastrous book. But I don't think I'd No, but imagine if down to he, that. despite so, being such a hopeless romantic, is, you know, known as serial kisser everywhere. And those movies where he has not kissed has been a miserable flop. For example, <laughs> Shanghai. <laughs> what other movies were there? Thankfully, some films where I have not kissed also have flopped. So, uh, which I've kissed also a flop. Okay. So, there's the, the, the equation got balanced over there. And I'm not writing that book, sir. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not write alone this time, I guess. But, well, I thought he could be a successful love guru if he wants to write that book. I think, think about it. Yeah. I think I'll actually give it a thought. So, guys, there's any questions? Now, we can ask questions from Imran and Bilal. What's your life for Edmonton? I'm the biggest Imran fan, maybe in the country. So much so that uh, my engagement was Imran asked me based on the theme. Pretty convenient. I'm, I'm assuming things now about your engagement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting visuals in my head. It was based on your songs. So okay. I stick, stick to the That's good. theme of this event. So I'd like to ask you, uh, you have been through this crisis of uh, crisis journey. And what are the things you learned about yourself as an individual through this journey? And what are the positive you could draw from this experience? You know, that was, the f that was the hardest chapter to pen down because I didn't fully know how it had changed me. And it took a lot of time. Um, it took me roughly two months. I was shooting for Azhar in London. And then, you know, I, I kept thinking about it because it's like any crisis, any trauma, uh, death changes you. Uh, a trauma like this in your family changes you. And you don't fully understand or comprehend how it's changed you. But then, when I realized it, I started penning it down. And it was actually going back to uh, a race that my son ran. And um, we didn't want him to run that race because he had just come back with, with chemotherapy and he was very frail. And, you know, there was going to be sun there with, with the mud there. And we thought he's going to fall sick because his immunity was low. And something miraculously happened, you know, something... It was never, not short of a miracle because when he started running the race, he was very frail. He took three steps and he fell hard on the floor. And he got himself up and he ran as fa fast as he could. He ran five steps and he fell again. He got up again, he ran and he finished that race. And I remember that visual of him turning around over his shoulder. He smiled at me and he put his thumbs up. And that was the wisdom that I got in my life that probably... 10 wise men haven't taught me in, in so many years. 
that life's going to hit you time and again. It's going to hit you very hard. And you're going to fall. And you're going to fall hard. And however shaky your feet, you must get up and uh, roll with the punches. And that's something a five-year-old taught me. And that gave me perspective to life and made me feel that personal issues, professional issues are so trivial. When you have a kid come into the world and at the age of three and a half battle a disease like this and has, still has a smile on his face um, through all of this, what, what are we complaining about? He has a smile right now. So he's a rock star. So this is what's changed me. This is what gives me perspective to keep moving on and have a sense of optimism. Responsibility is one because I find myself as being a very irresponsible person. I try to take on responsibility as much as I can. Having a son has changed that. That has given me a certain responsibility to act and behave in a way that he would aspire to be someone like me and, and play a role model for him. So that, to a certain extent, has brought in a kind of responsible part of me through this. I don't know what he's doing right now. I think he's changing the time. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you pass the mic, please? Yeah. Uh, hi, hi everybody. Uh, Bilal, my question is to you. We have, it's a fantastic book and we have seen the, the actor's journey and the father's journey. How difficult or easy was the author's journey for something that you may not have felt yourself, you are not a father yet. So uh, how was it to encode and decode and present it so beautifully? That's one of the first uh, things that came to my mind before I took this project on. The fact that I'm not a father. And also, I will probably never be able to understand what he went through because uh, it, it is a complex, uh, I mean, there's not one particular emotion you, you're hit with when you hear something like that. It's, uh, what I pretty much had to rely on was the sensor and his, uh, Imran sir's accounting of what happened. And from there, I had to actually get into his head. And luckily, he, uh, he narrated the incident to me as many times as was needed until I got it just right and uh, even if I did falter at times he did rewrite that portion and uh, as, an, as a person it has certainly changed me a lot the way I look at life now the way I learn to take the small things I mean I learn not to take the small things for granted the way I uh, I don't know my food habits haven't changed much I still, I still have five cokes I have two now <laughs> Unless I'm on the table and I keep taunting him. Then I have one. Uh, and uh, so, yes, it was a complex book to write. And I know this is just my second book. And even if I write ten more, none of them will be as special as this one was. So in that sense, yes, it, it was quite a journey. And I'm grateful it happened. Thank you. I don't know how it would lend itself to a movie. I don't see it really becoming a feature film with the story that's there. I don't know. I hope cinema get goes that way and it becomes that kind of film and gets a mainstream release. But uh, what we're trying to do right now is uh, make... Um, that's the actually the thought I had when we had a Delhi launch and I shared it with uh, Bilal and Hussain that I felt that this should be made into a, a documentary, uh, which is something I seriously want to think about because when I came down to talking to a lot of people here and seeing the case studies of uh, people who have been treated with the, uh, you know, of cancer with the conventional treatments here. And also there's a holistic way of looking at things. There's an alternative way which is not mainstream. So 95% of the times you will feel that oncology is the way to go. That go and get your chemotherapy and radiation, which is fine. But you also have to understand that there are other ways where people have been treated through nutritional uh, intervention and it has worked for them. I have spoken to people who have cured themselves of fourth stage cancer with nutritional intervention. After a certain age, you cannot get chemotherapy. Um, it, it plays havoc with your body. My mom passed away at the age of 70, um, two months ago. She didn't die of the cancer. She died because the chemotherapy uh, created havoc in her body and she couldn't get off the bed. Uh, so it would have been best for her to, to go through a nutritional plan because at a certain age you can't deal with that chemotherapy. So these are the options and this is the kind of information that needs to get out to people and people don't have this information on their side. So I think the documentary would really help 
telling people about the alternative treatments and also about, uh, you know, of course, conventional is something that I still stand by. My, it saved my son's life. But if you have a synergy of both treatments, it goes a long way. Also, what was the reason you took Ayan to uh, Canada and not India? Was it because they had <coughs> medical facilities? You know, our, our medical facilities are no less. I felt the environment there is great to recuperate because pollution is one thing that causes it. Um, you know, there's one way of looking at it. Cancer is actually a symptomatic response of the body. The amount of toxins you throw into it is going to play up one day. And in his case, it was a genetic malfunction because you know, he was too young. But going to Canada, there was the air there, uh, you know, the kind of food that he would get, he could have access to organic food to kind of recuperate through this and get his immunity back was very essential. And also over there, they have a field which we don't have here, which is something that I would want to see in India, is psychosocial oncology. That does not, uh, is the, the psychology of patients and parents when they go through treatment. It scars you, uh, you know, it's something that probably I feel me and my wife need to go for, for a counseling session after this because there's a deep-rooted fear in us after we have gone through an incident like this and Canada has that. So I didn't want him to change as a person because he was this vibrant force of nature, which he still is, and that it, it's, he, it, he's not changed at all. Uh, so this is because I wanted the environment to be great. And it, it's not changed him one bit, the entire, you know, he used to have the chemotherapy, next moment he was out conversing with the doctors, the nurses, everyone knew Ayan Hashmi, everyone knew who he was when he used to enter the floor. So, yeah, yeah. ये इसकी वजह हुसैन सर हैं क्योंकि जब हम इस किताब का टाइटल ढूंढ रहे थे तो बहुत सारे टाइटल के ऑप्शंस मैंने दिए जनरली बिलाल इन टाइटल्स ऑप्शन से सहमत रहते थे लेकिन हुसैन सर कहते थे कि नहीं कुछ जम नहीं रहा है वो यू नो मजा नहीं आ रहा है और ही इज टेल मी दैट ये कभी कभी आ जाता है थॉट प्रोसेस आप एयरप्लेन में बैठे हैं आप कहीं जा रहे हैं और आपको सोचने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती है बस टाइटल आ जाता है so I think that day I was, I don't cook normally, I was cooking an omelette at home and I had given him so many title options which he said no for and suddenly this thing came to my mind, kiss of life. So I called Bilal and I said to Milly to call me and say that I have found a title, kiss of life. She is not going to say no to this, I know that. So Bilal called her up, in, in two minutes he called me back and said, he was laughing on the phone, he said that they have got a very marketable title, kiss of life. So <laughs> that's how the title came about. And of course, the tagline is something we thought about earlier. The earlier titles that I had given were things like Don the Cape, Superhero Kids. Like, I, I get Hussain's point that it was not a personal thing. And if you have a film, you can see reference. So it is a life affirming, Kiss of Life. There's a certain optimism in that. Forget about all my films, get that visual out of your head. So that's what I guess Kiss of Life brings forth. I am very, very happy uh, with the reception the film has got and I'm very happy with the messages, with uh, the, uh, the adulation um, that people have given for the performance in the film. These counting pennies and dimes, you know, trade wale karte rehte. But we are very happy as a team that we, you know, made a film that we uh, started off and we were very proud of and we ended up achieving that and the audience that had to go and see it, they loved it. For me, it's an accomplishment all the way. You know, we also heard that when uh, I was going to the treatment, there were times when uh, he was along with his mom, mom Barbie. So, yes. uh, could you tell us those times when she handled it alone herself? That she can say, but uh, I think it was very testing for her uh, because uh, there was I was not there. Uh, she had to take him to hospital every week, and there were these drugs that were administered to him, chemotherapy drugs, and. The reactions used to be very, very strong. When kids have chemotherapy, I didn't know about this. I, could, I was hearing it on the phone, on Skype, I used to converse with them. But he used to sometimes throw up 10 times a night. So there used to be a bucket kept next to him, next to the bed, after he took uh, a chemotherapy drug. And for two days, he used to bring up all the food. And he started losing hair, and he started getting these very weird uh, side effects called foot drop. The foot used to go limp, and 
he used to get pins and needles in his hands and his feet. So she was dealing with all of it. I couldn't have done it without her. She was really this pillar of strength that uh, got Ayan and me and the entire family through this. And for some reason, he's walked out. I think he's bored. I think his father's yapping a bit too much. So, yes. one question. Yes. Let her, yeah. So, a dream come to like I'm sitting here, like, met you here. So, I just want to ask something regarding your new movie. Would you like to share something with your fans? Right now, there's there's only Raj reboot that's releasing in September, September 19th, and uh, it's a bit of a Raj right now, so we'll unfold it very soon when the promo is out. Promo should be out in the next two weeks, so 19th of September is the next release. Yes, yes. Let her ask. Let her ask. The girl with specs. Yes. It did change me, as I said before, it did change me a lot as a person. I, I learned uh, to be grateful for all the small things that life has given me and not complain as much. Yeah. Oh, it, I think, I mean, you heard uh, him telling the story of Ayan bringing up the food and I'm sure it pretty much made everyone here a little queasy. So imagine I had to uh, relive the entire tale. And, of course, seeing him, uh, he's not going to be very cheerful about recounting all of that. So naturally, when you see someone telling the story that way, it does kind of uh, play on you too, as well. And it, it is a very sad story, but at the end, I think it, it turns out to be one of hope. So, I guess, uh, I guess through the, is, we are not telling a sad story here. It's the story of how, from the sadness, we found hope. And uh, and luckily, all's well that ends well. You know that that's the takeaway from the book. It leaves you inspired. I hopefully, I think it uh, will get everyone pretty uh, happy the way it ends at that note and optimistic. That's pretty much what we kind of wanted the takeaway from this book to be. Thank you. Imran sir, yes. I would like to ask you a question. I became your fan after watching Jannat movie. I would like to when Jannat movie will release. I am very excited about Chandra series. I was sitting with the director last night only, I was telling him to make the film. He is looking for a script. So, when the script comes, I will definitely tweet about it. Yeah, so you wanted to. Yes, yeah, yeah. I am from Kerala. We just come to attend the Indra Oh, thank you so much. When are you coming to Kerala? Kerala, hopefully, when Raj releases, I will come to your city. Uh, which, which, where, where exactly you placed? All right, we'll just we take. We might tour Kerala during uh, Raj's release. We'll just take one last question. Please stand up and ask your question. Why have left the bad for Ah, yeah, I know you're not missing it. <laughs> you might see a bit of it in Raj. I know you might see a bit of it in Raj. So I'm, I'm getting back to that again. Of course you can, come. Huh. My wife is there. Say hi to my wife. I'd like to invite Parveen to come up on stage and please join us. Please come up on stage.
Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you for being here and being part of the event. I'd like to thank Tidal Waves and all our panelists this evening, Bilal, Imran, Hussain.